Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Sunday, December the 26th, and I truly hope you all had a wonderful Christmas day yesterday. I hope you enjoyed time with your family and friends and were blessed with some surprises you may not have been expecting. Our devotion is coming from Brenda Kuhneman's book called The Daily Prophecy. And our devotion today is entitled, Rewarded in His Will. Let's hear the prophetic word for today. Many have become distracted by all the world has to offer, and it has caused some to walk away from my best for them. So remember that as you stay with me, you will be rewarded for living continually committed to my will. That is very true. I have been in that spot. I've been in that place. The world can be alluring and can deceive you thinking that it's got more to offer than what God has. Many people believe the lie that um, living for the Lord means you miss out. And that can't be further from the truth. <laughs> living with the Lord and in God is where you find fulfillment complete fulfillment, satisfaction, blessing, prosperity. <clears throat> Comes with challenges too, because the world hates God's people. They hate the Lord. The world does not want to have anything to do with the world. I mean, with the Lord. The world wants you to follow the flesh, which is why it presents all those fleshly things. Our scripture comes from the book of 1 John, Chapter 2, verse 17, it says, And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Let's hear how Brenda expounds on this. There are rewards for living in a continual pursuit of God's will. Jesus never said it was an easy road. In fact, he said the road that leads to God's will is straight and narrow, while the road leading away from God is crooked and twisted. That's found in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. On the straight road, there isn't a lot of wiggle room before you veer off. In other words, this road isn't always a fun party. It requires doing the same consistent things every day over and over again. While this narrow road requires the most discipline, it also, it also provides the most peace and security because you know exactly where you are headed. There aren't a bunch of surprise curves and blind corners to navigate like you find on the road that leads away from God. That road offers all sorts of pleasures, but it offers no stability and will eventually disappear. However, by staying on the road to God's will, you know that you are headed straight into his perfect plan, which lasts forever. Too many people these days are getting on the wrong road that offers no happy ending. While it may not always be popular, stay on the road to God's will because it lasts forever and eventually you will enjoy the lasting reward it brings. You know, one of the most perfect illustrations for veering off the, the right path can be found in the Disney cartoon, Pinocchio. I don't think I've ever seen a more perfect illustration of what happens. You have the promise of all the things you ever wanted to do in life, the fulfillment of your fleshly desires. So you have Pinocchio with all these boys who are headed to this little island and they're able to smash and eat candy and play pool. And I think one of his friends is smoking a cigar, doing something like that. They're just doing wreaking havoc on this place, doing all the destructive things their parents are telling them, you, you know, sit still, don't run around, you know, don't smash things, you know, trying to teach them self-control and, 
and to behave themselves. And of course, not eating good food, but eating junk and, you know, <clears throat> doing everything a little kid wants to do, a little boy, I guess. And in the end, they pay the price. They wind up being enslaved. They transformed into a donkey and uh, used as slave labor. And it is, that's hell. You know, basically it's hell. And I mean, it's it's not an exact depiction, but it's like, it, it's a good illustration in the sense that you're believed that this is the way to go. And there's an allure. Oh, I get everything I want. And that's what the world does. You know, those people that are seeking fame and wealth and riches, you know, and, and or they just they don't want to be told that there's any restrictions. You know, they just want to eat whatever they want to eat. They want to um, drink whatever they want to drink. They want to smoke whatever they want to smoke. They want to pop whatever pill they want to pop. They want to, you know, live this lavish life <clears throat> and uh, have that abundance in a, according to how the world says you're supposed to do it. That's not what God says. He wants us to have life and have it to the full. But life does not always mean, having life to the full does not always mean that you've got material substance. Those things pass away. Those things, you cannot bring them with you. What is it about? Fame, fortune, or whatever it is that that you want so bad. That's the worship of mammon, basically. Mammon is a god. Don't make no mistake. The love of money is the root of all evil. So just chew on that for a while. Having money is not evil. Some people have said money is the root of all evil. No, you got that wrong. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. But that is in pursuit of what the world says is abundant life. That's not what God says is abundant life. Does he want you blessed and prosperous? Yep, because he said it in Jeremiah 29, 11. His plan is to prosper us, to not harm us, and to give us hope in a future. God's people should be uh, abundantly blessed financially because we are supposed to be helping the poor. We are supposed to be giving. We are supposed to have everything we need with overflow blessings so that we can help others. See how that works? If... Satan can manage to keep, get us into poverty by pursuing the wrong things and not giving. The devourer is not rebuked. Our money is drained from us and we can't figure out how or why. And, and then we are not able to do what God calls the church to do, which is to bless the poor and to do these other things. The love of money is what causes you to keep your tithe and not give your tithe. You're all suspicious Oh, what are they doing with my money? The church, God doesn't need my money. Well, you're not giving your, you are giving your money to God. You're actually just giving it in obedience. And then you see, there's a whole little, I could go into a whole, whole thing there, but it's important that we seek the Lord and we are rewarded. He will reward us for doing his will. So ask the Lord today, what is it I need to be pursuing? Sometimes you know exactly what it is. You've just been in denial about it. When you're getting alone with the Lord today, say, Lord, help me to refocus, especially as the new year is coming along. You don't have to wait till New Year's to do this. You could just say, I want to keep my mind focused on what you would have me to do. And be careful you don't get caught up and tangled up in, in legalism. But there are some real specific things that you know you know right now as you stand here, there are some things you need to knock off. You need to stop it because it's not good for you. And it's also something that God, God's word has, has said is not good. Okay. There are some things you know, bad habits, people you're associating with that are leading down a, a wrong path away from the Lord. Just stop it. Ask the Lord how to disentangle yourself from those things. Cry out for his help especially if you feel there's no way that you can stop what you're doing or, or stop associating with people that are trouble. Okay. Ask the Lord. He will show you. He will always show you when you seek him with a sincere heart. He knows when you're just going through the motions. You can't fool him. He knows every thought and and uh, imagination of your heart. He knows it all. So you can't go to him and pretend to be sorry he knows when you're truly sorry. He knows when you're coming to him out of fear. 
for the fire insurance. You have no intention of stopping anything or changing anything about your lifestyle. You're just checking the boxes, so to speak. Okay, you've had something that shook you up, but you really don't have a heart truly to search, to seek him. Seek him and say, Lord, I really want to do your will. I really want to do your will. Show me how to do it. I can't see. There's no example in my life to show me. I need you. Connect me to people who can show me how. I mean, those are the things that we can say and cry with a very sincere heart. When you pray, that's all you have to say. You don't have to remember some formula prayer. God hears your voice. Have a conversation with him. Ask for his help. He'll give it. Let's pray the prayer today. Lord, I commit myself to live in pursuit of your will. Keep me on the right road and I choose to discipline myself to follow you on the straight and narrow path. I thank you, Lord, that I shall enjoy the reward it brings. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, for everyone who is struggling, who has no idea, who needs an extra measure of help from you, I ask right now as their heart cries out to you for that help, Lord God, to disentangle themselves from uh, destructive habits, destructive people. Lord God, I just ask that you open the door, that you lead them, Father, where you would have them to go and help them to follow you. Break generational curses. Break off, Father God, those things that have been destructive in their lives. And I give you the glory as they cry out to you with a sincere heart, Lord, that you will reach them in Jesus' name. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day today. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. And please comment below. I'd love to hear about the victories and the things that God is doing in your life. God bless you and bye until next time.